Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO, IOC, supports its 150 member states to build their scientific and institutional capacity in order to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 14, which is to conserve and sustainably manage ocean and marine resources. Marine spatial planning plays an integral role in this process as there is an increased focus on the blue economy. The Institute of Marine Affairs is the Trinidad and Tobago focal point for development of the blue economy. Coral and mangrove monitoring, fisheries and aquaculture, coast water quality, geomatic systems and ocean governance are some of the activities that assist with marine spatial planning. Marine spatial planning in particular is a tool used under ICZM and we started a pilot project a couple of years ago in the Chagaramas area and the reason for Chagaramas is not only we're based in Chagaramas but also too there's so many different activities taking place in such a small space and conflicting activities if you look at it because you have the yachting tourism side and then you have the um, industrial side in terms of shipping carry dock and so forth you have the fishers um, you know you have people that use here for recreation it's important for recreational activities and then you also have the impacts that come into the area from land-based sources The intent of the, the plan of developing the Marine Spatial Plan is basically bringing all these stakeholders together, the ones that have regulatory functions as well as the ones that are users, and to sit together to build consensus as to what we want to see for Shagaramas, what is our vision, and what kind of activities we think could occur in what particular areas. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have 15 times more sea space than we actually have in land space in, under our jurisdiction. So we have to now look to the ocean for economic prosperity. I mean, we have always done that in the past in terms of the oil and gas sector, fisheries and tourism. But if we want to expand more, especially in terms of the maritime and fisheries, mariculture sector, we have to have a very, we have to manage our environmental resources and we have to manage the impacts on our environmental resources. So in developing our strategic plan, the IMA strategic plan 2019, 2024, we focus on the blue economy, focus on impacts from climate change but also to in terms of working with coastal communities to develop sustainable livelihood um, projects. Um, one of our main projects would be the mariculture project where we're just setting up a mariculture facility with the intent of doing marine cage culture. The aquaculture unit at the Institute of Marine Affairs conducts applied marine aquaculture research with the goal of laying the groundwork for the development of the mariculture sector of Trinidad and Tobago, where we are focusing on the offshore production of species such as the grouper and snapper. One of the exciting projects that we are currently working on is a suitability analysis, where we are looking at what areas in the marine and ocean environment of Trinidad and Tobago is most suitable for offshore mariculture. A major component of the project is looking at the existing coast and ocean activities taking place in Trinidad and Tobago and seeing where offshore aquaculture can take place. An emerging blue economy sector like mariculture faces the challenge of ensuring that it can coexist with existing activities in our marine and coastal environment. Marine spatial planning can assist in this process by coordinating all the coastal and ocean activities in Trinidad and Tobago. Fisheries is important um, nationally, not only to uh, food security and poverty alleviation, but it also contributes to things like recreation, to tourism and to culture. Fisheries and marine spatial planning, you need certain type of um, spatially explicit data or information. For example, you would need to know things like um, fishing grounds, the location of spawning, of spawning grounds in nursery areas, as well as 
the abundance and distribution of fish, uh, fisheries resources. We here at the IMA conduct, um, in our department, we conduct the research in order to provide this information, which would then feed into marine spatial planning. Of course, the most obvious challenge would be to get that spatially explicit data and information that you need. But apart from that, you know, our fisheries, it's not simple, it's very complex. You're talking about multi-species, multi-gear, multi-fleet, and on top of that, you have seasonal changes. As a coral reef ecologist, I study the coral reefs around Tobago. Coral reefs are very important because they're hotspots of biodiversity and they have very important roles that serve us and the communities of Tobago. They provide us with food, they're a source of income, they support our tourism industry and what we need to do is manage them sustainably so their health can continue to um, provide us into the future and so there that is where the blue economy comes in. I think the biggest challenge would be the willpower to agree on a marine spatial plan that is agreeable by all the stakeholders. As a scientist we would advise on what areas uh, should be prioritized for protection but the process should be participatory where we include communities and how they utilize the coral reefs and all those aspects need to be considered in developing a marine spatial plan. So what we do at the IMA, especially in this department, is that we monitor these various watercourses and beaches for pollution and we do up reports and we send these reports to various stakeholders and these stakeholders are the ones that will have to alleviate these problems. Monitoring the watercourses for pollution is very vital to the blue economy because it falls in line with tourism. We cannot have a sustainable tourism if the beaches are polluted. So, because we are Trinidad and Tobago, different from the other islands, we are an oil and gas based economy. We have lots of challenges with respect to having our nice beaches and oil and gas exploration. So that is one extra challenge we have. And we also have a challenge of runoffs from these industries and communities that can also affect the water quality of these beaches. We need to ensure that where we have designated beaches, it is away from the oil and gas sector and runoff from communities and industries. Geomatics Unit, we deal with the acquisition, processing and analysis of spatial data and information. So we take data from satellites particularly, um, make it into a form which is more usable and applicable to um, coastal zone management. Within the marine space, we have a lot of conflicting activities because, for example, um, oil and gas support could impact upon the recreational bathing beach water quality. Um, and so you have all these conflicts within this area. So using GIS and remote sensing, we're able to map these activities to better apply a set of rules and regulations as to reduce conflicts and to optimize the um, activities space for the public at large and the economy. So using aerial photography, as well as an airborne light detection and ranging system, which is a laser, which they fly in an airplane and shoots out hundreds of thousands of times per second. So using that information, you're actually able to get the characterization of the tops of everything, tops of buildings and the tops of trees. At the same time that that LIDAR survey was conducted, an aerial photography survey was uh, done. So we now can map the extent of mangrove forest in Trinidad and Tobago. So we know it in 2D. And then we also have the 3D aspect from LIDAR, which gives you the top of the trees. So using that information, as well as a lot of field work, where we uh, take a lot of measurements in the mangroves, we're able to very, very highly accurately determine the total amount of carbon held in mangrove forests and get an approximation of the below ground carbon. Now, what can we do with that information? Actually earn money through this scheme. Some initial estimates have been done for the, just for the main ridge protected area in Tobago that um, it was something on the order of 100 million euros worth of carbon 
sequestered within that area. And doing any work on the sea is a lot more costly than doing it on the land. So f funding for research activities is always a major constraint. The Marine Governance and Policy Research Program uses the best available scientific data and information to inform policies to protect and conserve the marine environment. The Marine Governance and Policy Research Program has supported the development of an integrated coastal zone management policy framework for Trinidad and Tobago. The policy framework seeks to foster a sustainable ocean-based economy or blue economy. Therefore, marine spatial planning requires good governance to manage conflict and ensure equity in the use and distribution of our country's vast but limited marine space and resources. Being a small island state, of course, we have a lot of people that live on the coast, a lot of people that depend on the coastal resources. So bringing people together and, and, and educating persons and training them and, and teaching them how their activities can negatively impact on their livelihood um, is always a challenge. But we spend a lot of time doing public education and awareness. Um, we've done projects in the past where we engage communities, for instance, to restore um, mangroves with any country you have priorities and Trinidad and Tobago we may have some priorities that may focus on economic development and many times not enough research goes into um, and not, not enough funding going to research projects but there's a trust towards evidence-based decision making so we need to provide the data that the developers need the data the policy makers need in order to foster the blue economy. Whether we go to the beach or not, marine spatial planning affects us all. It reduces pressures on the ocean, preserves and restores marine ecosystems, and safeguards ocean-related prosperity for generations to come. And with the IMA, marine spatial planning is leading us into the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development 2021 to 2030.